I don't know what happened when I was recording earlier. They just uh, the video just shut off by himself. The uh, rec maybe maybe I finish I finish memory in the in the mobile phone. I think I made I make I made too much too much videos anyway, and all about this empty empty roads. There's no one. No one around, almost, well, few people around. But, you know, I used to, I used to encounter a lot of uh, Italian people in London in this time. And you can, you know, this area, there is a lot of Italian people living and working. I didn't encounter one Italian guy, one Italian lady, nothing. All of them, they are at home they are respecting the uh respecting the uh the curfew basically <laughs> i'm not laughing at them i'm just saying i'm amazed but it's uh, understandable because of what happened in italy and uh, i'm sorry to hear this all these people they are dying may god stop this uh, unfortunate uh, situation in all the world everywhere in the world but we have to stop at one second and think one one uh, uh, situation we didn't ever consider you see uh, i'm not talking about in religion right now but i'm talking about to the people they believe in god they believe in something you know they believe good and evil exists in the world look you know we heard so much people dying everywhere in the world you know for sickness for viruses for wars for famine but the world never stopped for that never stopped working never stopped flying never said you know what i i am fed up about these children they are dying in africa so i'm gonna i'm gonna refuse to go to work unless they help them or I'm gonna to refuse to listen about all these people dying in Syria I'm gonna to refuse to go to work unless they stop the war you know we could have done all these things yeah no one ever done that we kept living our lives eating drinking marrying and getting married you know what I'm saying but we didn't care about the people dying around in the world but all of a sudden a little virus starts from china that makes its way in europe italy america now now in the united kingdom freeze he frees the world no one is going to work i mean few people they are still going to work not because they chose they have choice to do it but because their uh, their job is essential and uh, you know you, we should reflect you know we should say all these people they were then we're not we're not better than them where why we have this this special treatment maybe in this time where we are stuck at home we should pray God and tell him tell him forgive us for we only thought about ourselves about uh, our pleasures about our sins we didn't stop going to drink to the pub uh, and send money to the poor people in africa they are dying for many diseases many wars in the middle east we didn't do that we didn't give a, a without saying the bad words we didn't give a damn about no one we uh we basically care only about not about only about eating drinking and marrying getting married that's normal but about our enjoyment drinking alcohol taking drugs uh, committing adultery and many other sins they are even more abominable to god and you think that this virus the cause is is only men 
you know, man, he 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 make, can make a lot of amazing things. He can create a lot of amazing technology, and uh, he can create a lot of amazing medications. But you know, behind man, there is always God. When God allows man to create something, then he created. But when God says no, you're not gonna be able to do this then he's not going to be able to do this so i believe that god is uh, the ultimate judge for all of us but we should uh, we should uh, think about what we we've been doing and we should ask forgiveness we don't have the excuse now we are stressed we're not going to work we are not going to uh to have to wake up every morning to go to to uh to, to, to our work, job, stressful job, that the devil was tricking us to make us believe that's what you should do. God is giving you the opportunity to all of you, to me included. He started more, much more before, before than the coronavirus, but yes, he gave me the opportunity to know him. So this is the opportunity for you, anyone that is at home, to know God, not to throw yourself in watching pornography or stupid movie with violence and a lot of evil or with uh, uh, playing with games video games like a, a child you know you should be a man you should get up and say this is the time for me to become a man a child of god a, a real man is a child of god if you become a child of god then you become you became a real man because a man a real man of God is a child, is not a man, meaning he got a humble heart and he, uh, he doesn't sin, he doesn't commit abomination. You see, oh, your children, if you have children, look at them, most of them, well, now they are corrupted by, by, by the games, uh, TV shows, cartoons they watch, but in nature, when they are little, they, they are simple. They, they play, they eat, when they're hungry, they cry, and when, when they're tired, they sleep. They don't have evil thoughts. They don't plan to do something that can anger God. But we are grow. When we grow up, when we become adults, we, we, we start to become evil at the same time. Because we, the only thing we have in our head is sexual perversion how to steal money from the rich not to work not all of us obviously there's a lot of people they are honest as well but honesty is not e enough god needs wants you to know him he doesn't if you ignore him you're not hurting god but you are hurting yourself so you need to know god you need to read the bible i'm a christian and i believe that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of Yahweh, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, He is the Savior of the world. And if you don't know Him, and if you, if you don't search Him and ask Him for forgiveness and for uh, salvation, this is nothing. What is coming, this is nothing. This is just God giving you a pause, giving you rest. You know, he's saying to you, look, you have to know me before you die. This, this what happening now is the mercy of God. This is not uh, uh, the punishment. The punishment when he comes, oh my God. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna, you, you cannot handle it. You will be sorry. You will be crying. I saw it in the dream, he showed me the Lord when the angels will come to kill they don't come to save they don't come to to uh, uh protect they come to punish you god is giving you the time now to repent your sins to ask forgiveness and to receive his gift it's not going to protect you from uh you know it's not going to a mask is not going to protect you from uh uh, eternal damnation maybe he can protect you from virus corona or whatever from a flu virus 
okay I'm not saying it does it's not going to I'm not I'm not gonna say to you you should uh, walk without uh, protection okay but you ha I'm, what I'm saying to you is to add an extra an extra protection not to remove a pro your your uh, I'm not asking you to remove your gloves to remove your uh, your uh, masks no I'm asking you to add a spiritual protection over your physical protection because the coronavirus I believe is not only a virus that attacks for the body but attacks the spirit and the spirit is air remember the spirit is air is what you breathe so if it does attack the spirit and if it kills the spirit you cannot breathe so what the scientists they saying is real is true because if you cannot breathe you don't have the spirit of god in you and if you cannot breathe you're dead so you need yeah protect yourself from corona from catching coronavirus but if you catch it no one can save you but god no one can save you but god trust me you remember that that word i tell you right now only the lord can save you only yeshua can save you only the son of god can save you no one no uh no vaccination no this no that i believe that the only one can save us from this coronavirus is the is to accept the son of god as our protector as our salvation because if we don't do that if we don't do that if we if we let ourselves uh, if we let ourselves to to be proud if we let ourselves you know how do you call it if, if you let ourselves say no to to his protection no to his uh, love because remember one thing you underestimate over all things that God came down from heaven and he died for you that's all you you need to know so if you don't uh, appreciate that so yeah this is London you see the shops they are still open I have a lot of stuff I don't need if I, yeah maybe they are half empty probably look at there they are probably half empty and uh, probably they closed earlier I don't know actually let me ask what time they are they are keeping the opening and closing times ah forget it it's just waste of time what they did they, they don't thank God people is like look at you live in one of the richest part of the in, in richest country United Kingdom Italy uh, America France look in a, I lived I lived my entire uh, childhood until the age of 18 years old in Africa I saw so much suffering and so much poverty even though I was one of the most uh, uh, let's say privileged because my dad was okay you know he got money and stuff like that he had a good job but it's almost here yeah, it's already about to close are they closing okay. Hi, what time are you closing guys 10 minutes but every day is going to be early closing no okay thank you they are closing early and it does make sense because what, what are you open for actually I really really you know I think they are really amazing to have uh, 
the courage to open and stuff, you know, after all this fear that the government is putting to people's face. And at least in, in here in UK, they didn't lock us physically, but they lock us uh, psychologically. It is a psychological lockdown, right brother? Psychological lockdown. So, it's, it's bad because you see, I mean, the government didn't say in London you cannot go out from your house to go to the shop or stuff like that. I mean, he didn't say that. But look at how many people they are locked up in their flats. You think he's going to help them this? I don't think so. Because when they, when they, uh, there's going to be the need of a real danger that you have to be at home they cannot they will not be at home because they will be so stressed they will say i don't care let me die but i'm gonna go out from your from my flat because it's not uh, you see this is not hap didn't happen gradually it happened suddenly you understand suddenly it's like a rape you know when when, it's, when you do something suddenly is a forced thing is a rape you know so people they've been doing all their life certain way working and uh, you know uh, going to the gym going to the pub going to see their friends and now you isolating them I don't think it's gonna be healthy they, they not only is gonna it's not gonna be healthy but it's gonna be a you know a w the worst outcome that you can ever imagine because yes the virus is killing people yes the virus is doing damage but when closing locking down people is not gonna make the virus go away then people they're gonna start to say when is gonna end and they're gonna start to you know for now pizza is stuff like this is open you can order a pizza, but I don't advise it. It's better to cook yourself. But, you know, for people they cannot cook, they have health problem. Of course, they can order pizza as long as they have money. It's all about money these days. And imagine the people, they don't have a house. Where they are now? Where they are? In here, in London, it's hard that you find homeless people with uh, their voluntary, you know, unless they are not voluntarily uh, decide and uh, choose to be homeless because of drug and alcohol and other and other uh, and other problems, mental health and stuff like that. But the government in here in the UK, well, at least until now, I don't know what's going to happen now. He always look after the homeless people in uh, in UK. They they find them shelter, they give them hostels, they look after them, and uh, you know they care about their people. And even homeless people, they come from Europe. I saw like Polish people. They have all alcohol problem, drug problems. They have a hostel down there, just where I came from. Now they call it uh, I forgot it a uh, market lane. They go to sleep there. It's an open house, like big house where there is a lot of beds for the homeless, temporary homeless. And then if they apply for housing, they give them place to stay. So, so for that, I respect the British government because it's very humane. In Italy, I saw people suffering for homelessness for over 10 years and no one cares no one helped them you know what i'm saying hey my brother how are you okay how, how is going this this uh this fake uh, this, <laughs> this craziness man no no I, i'm not saying fake uh, me too before i was saying fake 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 
But now I see a lot of shit going on in Italy and stuff. So look, I put this one as <laughs> you know, just to just when you get close to when you go yeah. in the bus and stuff like this. But for the rest, uh, you know. Don't worry too much. No, no, yeah. Nah. Most people there recover. I've known people that they've had it and they've recovered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young, if you, listen, if you don't have serious health problems, they said you can recover it. But these days, you cannot 100% trust what they say in, uh, in the. Well, I mean, in life, you're never sure anyway. Exactly. At any moment, you could get. Yeah. That's why, you know what, that's why they say in Italy as well, you see, they say people, they die, a lot of people, but every year also a guy was saying, a journalist, that every, every year they was dying thousands of people for normal influenza and no one complained. Yeah. But now because of this uh, uh, pandemic, you know, because that's a pandemic, you know, like people, yeah, the panic that they put in the mind of people, they are concentrated only of the disease, that nothing else. So. I don't think it's a good thing, bro. We, we need to have faith in God as well, man. It's not only uh, a, a physical uh, attack, also spiritual, you know? Yeah. So you need to have both faith in God and protect yourself as well. First, for, have faith in God. Yeah. Then, second, be careful of, of the things that, uh, you know, like germs and stuff. I, honestly, I always been, before, even before Corona, I always was careful, you know, what I eat, what I drink, what I touch, you know what I'm saying? What time is closing now? No more time for now. For now. Yeah. And thank God, at least, you know, people, they don't, they don't panic. Because, you, you know, you know that the next day, next shop is open. If you finish something, that's why people, they was, <laughs> me, me too, I did a little bit of too much, uh, yeah. not too much. To be honest, will end me exactly for two weeks, that's it. Uh, it's not even like I, I put... Uh, uh, I shop for months or something. Some people they fucking crazy, bro. They uh, they have uh, an yeah, entire. Open, so that's not... You got tissue as well, yeah? Toilet paper, you got it. Yeah. Oh God bless. That, that's hard to get at the moment. Yeah. That's but... one thing that's still. Yeah, still hard, isn't it? That and pasta. And pasta as well. Price. Yeah. Price is okay. Do you know what? When the when this when this thing you will. Be... It's not like even if you can't find those things. Like yeah. Price, price. Exactly, you don't have to have pasta. Yeah, you, know I mean? you know what I'm saying? It's just but, because everyone's like, oh, there's no pasta, everyone's looking for pasta and taking everything. Yeah, and you know why? Pa because because they what they think is pasta doesn't go off. Yeah. But there is a lot of people that doesn't go off. But it's not only rice, not only pasta, but they put you know what they, they this is they making it worse for us and they're making it good for the big businessmen, they gonna put the price up now. You will see. From next month. Yeah, of course. That's why toilet paper, some toilet paper we're selling for four rolls for yeah. 99. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, what you can do? We buy it because we know people want it. Yeah. So we don't have a choice. But exactly. What can you do? It's like the cheap stuff. The, yeah. Man, like you know what? As long as you don't put up the price of uh, food, if you put up the price of tissue, man, I don't care. Yeah, there's water in the house, isn't it? Yeah. You can clean yourself like that. Yeah. That's what I'm doing, bro. You need a towel, you need water, actually is much healthier. <laughs> but, exactly. Then yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good a good uh, a good thing for your uh, body. They think it's only a Muslim thing or something, but in Eritrea we do yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because uh, look, there is nothing worse than uh, your shit, man. <laughs> There's nothing worse your your poo when it comes out is because it's getting rejected by your body. The the worst thing it comes out from. So you need to get rid of that shit, man. My brother, thank you. Nice to see you. I'll come when I need something. I know that you're open now. Okay. <laughs> Take care, brother. Take care. Hey, that's. That's the life we are facing. People, they're putting up prices for the tissue now. Toilet paper. Well, the guy, he bought the most toilet papers, better start selling them because he's going to make a lot of money. I'm just kidding. Salam. Huh? Who is that?
Ah, okay, brother. Okay, take care. Eh? Some weird people in this freaking country. Even though, thank God, there is a lot of nice people as well. Yeah, so I was saying, in Italy, when you are homeless, there's no help, man. They will let you. Yes, even, even I remember, oh my God. I remember in Italy, one of the cruelest thing. Oh my goodness. Italian people, you have to repent, man. You have to repent. That's why this evil is upon you. God is pissed off with you, man. I remember when I used to live in Italy and there was this place, they call it uh, um, a place they used to call it charity. I didn't know even if the word was Italian in, in English, I mean, in that time. And this place, this place, yeah, they were, they were, uh, it's the only one open in all Rome, yeah, where homeless people, they can actually go and eat some food. And it was run by the Caritas. That, that's how it is, the Caritas. And the Caritas, I think, used the Red Cross or something. And this, I remember for uh, 1992, I was there because uh, I fight with my uncle. My uncle kicked me out from the house where I used to live with him. I was young. I didn't work. I didn't have a job because in Italy, to find a job was hard in that time and is now and because your color your color is very important the only jobs you can do if you are black is uh, is like uh, the worst jobs the most dangerous the thing the, the, the jobs that the english people uh, italian people they don't want to do and they they pay you like a quarter of what they give an Italian guy. That's, that's the humanity they have the Italian, you understand? So basically, that's what they used to do. And I used to beg for work, I couldn't find. So what can I do? I, did, I, I was so proud to ask for my sisters, for my uncles, even though they were more, much more integrated than me. They had a good life because they, their skin color were, I am mixed race, their skin color was, uh, you know, much, uh, much better than mine, much, you know, they were whiter than me. And they went to school, they finished university, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but me, I didn't have that opportunity because when I was growing up in Eritrea, there was a, a war. Anyway, to cut it short, I went to this place, they call it Caritas, oh my God, just to have a plate of pasta, how they treat you worse than a dog than a dog i swear to you worse than animal you queue up for hours sometimes if you are the last you cannot even eat but it's not even because you cannot even eat it was the way they used to treat you the people they work in there they were like german nazi man german nazi they used to shout at you hey you stop shouting stop talking stay in the queue don't move, don't br oh my goodness. I swear I'm not lying, everyone, that anyone that he has been in Italy, in that period of time, he can tell you how bad they treat homeless and poor people in Italy in general. If you are poor, don't be, don't live in Italy, man. If you are black, don't live in Italy, unless you know how to kiss asses. Of course, they love the black nigger, that he kiss the white ass like he knows how to lick their uh, bottom and turn it from <laughs> white to pink. You know what I'm saying? That's that kind of black man. They love him. They love that kind of black man. So anyway, I'm gonna cut it here. I am uh, uh, dropping in my friend house just quickly to say hi. I don't want to take his uh, address uh, video. Anyway, that's what it is. We live in, in this time, 
what, hey, that, what I was saying is Italian people, yeah, you have to repent. Believe me, you are. You don't realize how vulgar you are, how you treat people. You have these bad words in every word you, you take out from your mouth. You need to change, man. You need to, for, to ask forgiveness from God. I'm not saying that for me. I'm saying for you because I was a sinner and I asked forgiveness to God, to Jesus Christ. And I, I feel like I've been changed. So I hope the same for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua.